Hola. Tis I, Alicia. How are you? Hope you're doing well. We are going to look into Robin from the Sister Wives. Now that all three parts of the tell-all are done, I want to look into and um, see what else we can find out. Things that Suki just didn't address or couldn't get out of them. Maybe she didn't even think to address. All that stuff. So first... I want to see, did Robin really want a relationship with Christine? She says she did. But did she really want a relationship with Christine? Like, she want to be like good old real sisters, you know, loving the same man, sharing secrets, sharing their clothes. Oh my gosh, I think this tank top would look spectacular over your long sleeve shirt. Oh, all my clothes are purple. Would you like it? Oh, of course, you can borrow it. So, did Robin want a relationship with Christine? Because... I'm wondering. And again, allegedly for entertainment purposes, this is a tarot card reading. I'm gonna say there's an idea that Robin wanted a relationship with Christine based upon her rules. Like she wanted it on her terms and it didn't happen. There feels like there's this idea, perhaps there was some maybe gaslighting going on to Christine, maybe backwards and forwards, maybe both Christine, Robin, to each other. I don't know that she truly, truly wanted one unless it was going to be on her terms. It feels like, well, no one has the right to treat me that way. So I, you know, I have to be in control of relationships. I dictate how I'm treated. So it's like, yeah, I want a relationship with Christine, but I want it on my terms. And, um, and I want to be in charge here. But Christine's just not uh, amenable to that kind of thing. So, alrighty then. Let's see. <clears throat> Has Robin supported Cody's relationship with Christine? Oh my. Not in the way that you would think. There's, um, again, like I think uh, Janelle touched on it when she said, I'm tired of Counselor Robin or however she phrased that. There's this idea that Robin's here behind the scenes as the wise counsel to Cody and she's here and she's um, helping to give him new ideas, new like practical advice, well, practical uh, advice to Cody on how to deal with this relationship, but she's always going to feel like she's on the defensive here. It's always such a struggle. Da, da, da. But behind the scenes, we have the sneaky snacker. She's uh, over here collecting information for whatever it is, purposes, filing it away in her filing cabinet for later. And, you know, I wouldn't say that was necessarily totally supportive. So let's just uh, say sort of. Not for the benefit of the sister-wife relationship in the uh, Cody Brown Entertainment uh, group. Did Robin chase or beg for a relationship with Christine? Cody was like, don't go after her with cap in hand. She's never gonna love you. So did Robin chase a relationship with Christine? Or maybe that was a story she told Cody. If she was chasing, she wasn't chasing that long. That's kind of like someone who starts to run after something and they stop three steps in like, meh, it's too far away, never mind. No, this relationship was dead a long time ago. Um, this uh, There's this idea that this is what she's saying, this is what she's telling people. Um, behind the scenes, she wants a relationship that's on her terms. Again, it's like she feels like she needs to fit into this role of the uh, counselor for the family and maybe a counselor in every relationship. But also this idea, like, it's my way or the highway, and if you don't abide by that, then we're not going to have a relationship. Here it is almost like she's been shut out behind the scenes, but yet she wants to keep making it seem like that's a story that she wants to go with. Oh, I do, I do want a relationship with Christine. I do, I do, I do. While she's, you know, shaking her head no. The door was closed a long time ago. I don't think she's really been chasing, but she probably told Cody she's been chasing this relationship with Christine for so long that that's the narrative that's continuing to go on. How did Christine treat Robin? Robin said, oh, she was snarky to me. She made comments like it's going to be her way or the highway, which seems kind of funny in light of what we're seeing here, allegedly for entertainment purposes in the cards. So how did Christine treat Robin? She walked away from her. There's this idea that in the beginning, I'm open to having a working relationship with you as a partner in this collective marriage, spiritual marriage, whatever we're going to call their dysfunction. And 
there's this idea here that Christine wanted at some point, she was going to work in collaboration for their future together. Let me give you practical advice. You know, I was the last new wife, you're the new wife. Let me give you practical advice on how to move forward into the relationship. And then it became a thing where that created drama between the two of them. I don't need your help. You don't need to tell me. So I think that's where Robin's like snarky comments and telling me how it's gonna go. Robin is trying to give her practical advice about how the family functions, that kind of stuff. It wasn't necessarily, I'm telling you what to do. And this is how we do it here. Like we do not use that brand of ketchup. We use this brand of ketchup, like all of Mary's um, the allegations about Mary. This is more about like, well, this is just kind of how it goes. And that wasn't sitting well with Robin. I think she took it as not being helpful, but as being demanding or um, someone trying to tell her how it's going to be. That's not how it was coming across. And so I think from that point forward, then Christine is just very much business after that. Okay, we have to work together. Whatever. I'm not putting in extra effort. I'm not. Um, I, I tried to, you know, make something happen with you, a relationship, and we're going to be cordial for the state of the family, but I've got my own deal over here, you have your own deal over there, and we're just going to be separate enemy, enemy, <laughs> enemies, entities moving forward. So I, I think it was misconstrued in uh, Miss Robin's mind there. Let's see, has Robin ever talked nasty about the other wives to Cody? This would be not necessarily saying like, oh my gosh, I, you know, the way that, um, you know, Mary does her eyebrows, it's horrific. It's not like that. What this is coming across as is she's again forming the family in the way that she thinks is more functional. She is over here again as Counselor Robin. She's in his ear. Here's a, the, you know, the codester. She's in his ear. She knows how to maneuver him to get the results that she thinks are correct. So it's not necessarily talking smack, but she's over here again in her Counselor Robin mode, trying to make sure that he's taking the right steps um, with his wives and uh, the relationships are on track according to how um, her advice and wise counsel to Cody is received. So it's not necessarily smack talking as much as it's Cody's venting and she thinks she's the um, in-house shrink. Why was Robin crying so much out in the driveway after the knife in the kidneys uh, conversation in Christine's backyard? Robin's back in the driveway after she leaves and it's like, Darcy, go! And she walks off and then she's uh, hugging Mary and crying like, you know, so devastating. So was she devastated? I don't know. Let's see girl stop this is about her and how she is perceived on tv allegedly for entertainment purposes terra reading this is about her and she wants to control the narrative she wants to make sure that she's in control of this narrative because she's been getting a lot of judgment about who she is so she's looking at social media and she sees that people are not happy with her and she's looking to see how she can control the narrative and so she's like okay what do i need for this role here let me uh, dole out what the correct response should be we're losing a valued family member and um, that's what I'm going to do because I'm fighting back against how everybody's been perceiving me and I don't like it and so I'm doing what I think is expected of me according to the audience so this is why she's showing the big drama out there in the driveway she, there's nothing here that says she's sad <clears throat> that Christine's leaving she's planned her reaction when they had the goodbye at Robin's house where McKelty invited everyone to say their last goodbye and it looks like the Robin family standing off to the side and the rest of them are on the other side, Hatfield and McCoy's goodbye. What was Robin thinking when this goodbye was going on? Now she said, oh, I was gonna show up to support her anyway, because you know, I'm always there for Christine. So why did Robin, like, what is she thinking as they're saying goodbye in Christine's backyard? Good riddance, sayonara, see you later. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I'm Queen Bee. We've got this idea. We're already looking to the future. <sighs> it's interesting that um, we got these pentacles all over. She's there. She's giving her support. She doesn't like what's going on, but this underlying energy here is the uh, page of 
pentacles, which I can sometimes see as like get rich quick schemes, kind of like figuring out, okay, now this is done. We're losing our chunk of money. Um, and now I'm figuring out like what's going on. So it's not really, she's there for participation for the storyline. It's not because she's there because she's going to miss Christine. There's this idea now that I need to start um, figuring out how we're going to function now that Christine's out of the money making for our um, bank account. This is a new beginning for us and I'm going to have to start figuring out where we're going to move forward to make this um, money going forward. So there is this idea too. It's like we've been working really hard on this, I guess, the storyline. That's how it kind of feels like where we're getting Christine out. This is like a long drawn out process and she's been perfecting how she's going to be going about this underlying energy is this um robin seems to have this energy of like there's always a rainbow right around the corner and so oh we're gonna we just have to go through this but i'm thinking about this and da, 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 how we're gonna play this out for like our next se season da, da, da. she's not like heartbroken over there she's just like going along because she got to go along to get her paychecks and continuing to flow let's see does robin actually want plural marriage going forward she said yeah she is open to it. Uh, the code stir seems to be not interested. But if you want some easy money from the TLC gang, you might consider it. So does Robin actually want plural marriage going forward? Damn, she does. Oh, she does. She wants to be in charge of it. She apparently loves this idea of the... Uh, plural family idea. She wants to get out of our, you know, tough situations that we're being having. She's here to support uh, the Codester here and his um, future endeavors. It would be like really emotionally healing for all of them. This is what they need. This is what God's put on their heart. And by gosh, we're going to get it done. We're going to walk away from what this turmoil of the past has been. All the ladies are out, but I'm looking for this sisterhood. And uh, we're going to do it right. And I'm going to be very strategic. The reason why this all failed was because of X, Y, Z. Like she's already done a, you know, the day after postmortem on the relationship. So she's, she's already figured out what went wrong in the relationships and she's going to drive it now into success. So I think she's almost, here's where you went wrong, Cody, but I'm here to help you. And I'm going to help you figure out how to do polygamy successfully. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. Robin thinks that she's the scapegoat or the whipping boy, one or the other. So why does Robin think that she's the scapegoat? She seems to go with this narrative a lot. Is she the scapegoat or is this just something that she's just assigned that role to herself? Okay, this is delusion, allegedly for entertainment purposes. This is um, the story that she's telling. I don't know if she even knows that she's telling these stories to herself. It's like there's a very naive thinking here. And um, it's a, I'm the savior. I'm the, um, they'll sacrifice me at the stake. This whole kind of idea. I've just been here trying to support the polygamous marriage. And, you know, they just don't want to drop it all on me. But no, I don't think she even knows I think she fully believes that she's a scapegoat and I don't think she actually takes accountability of her role in being a scapegoat here where she's just uh, she likes that label so she applies it to herself not seeing how why people are not happy with her being uh, the wise counsel to the codester at all times you know his therapist on speed dial so she just applied that label to herself why was Robin continuing on with the minimal crying but she made it seem like she was having a fit and she always had to pause during these interviews and oh, ah, with her tears that were practically non-existent. That was like, we saw that last tell-all, we saw this tell-all. What's up with uh, Robin and the uh, crocodile tears? They stymie me. I, for someone that seems to cry all this much, seems odd, but maybe I'm just a cold, heartless soul. I don't know what school of acting she went to because this is acting. This is I'm serving it up. This is what's good for the a drama, for the show. It's interesting. Like, this is how you tell a story. You have to have emotion. It's almost like she's read some acting book and she's like, okay, well, how do I convey emotion? Oh, I'm sad. So that means tears. Um, if it was like, oh, I'm happy. That means smile. Oh, I'm, I'm confused. That means uh, crazy eyebrows, whatever. This is an idea of I am serving up what I believe is necessary um, for the scene. I'm heartbroken or I'm supposed to be heartbroken 
okay, I'm not really heartbroken. I'm just pretending I'm heartbroken. But if I don't put in this um, performance, you know, all of the money that we've, all of the money, all of the work that we put in for this money is gone to pot. It's going down the drain. So this is, uh, the crying is calculated, in my opinion here, for continuing on the drama, but it's not done well. I, I don't know. She needs to go to a different acting school or something because it's not really working. This is my question that I don't think has ever been answered, but I was re-watching some old episodes. Did they uproot the family from Vegas to Flagstaff so Robin's son could go to college? Was that why we were like, we have to get up and go right now? I think the premise was that, oh, the market's hot and we have to sell, and the houses did not sell right away. So did we leave Las Vegas, go to Flagstaff so her son could go to college there? Yes. And uh, yes. Uh, this was like a decision that was made. So if you ever go back to that episode where he brings out his presentation, he got printed at Kinko's or wherever. This was already planned. She knew about it. She wasn't going to talk about it. That's why she's like uh, pursing her lips when you watch that episode. This is, she was very much on board with uh, serving up this proposal with Cody, but just to be, um, you know, his cohort cheerleader in this. She needs to um, keep her family intact here. The thought of, you know, not having all of her kids close to her, that would have been a problem for her. Although I don't know why the kid couldn't go to the college in Vegas, but whatever. Anyhow, uh, the decision was made. He was going to go to the school and we've got to go. Um, but she kept quiet, even though this was the plan and they were going to do the plan regardless of the wives buy-in or not, but it was going to be better if they had the wives buy-in. So interesting. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Come join me in the Moon Moth Manor and I will see you next time. Adios.